I have the sneaking suspicion that this little guy right here, the DF54, is really going to alter the landscape of the market for budding baristas. <laughs> One of the things I hear the most often is, what kind of cheap grinder can you recommend to me to get good espresso? Because I don't want to spend more on a grinder than I spent on my machine. And since you can get machines that cost 150 bucks, 200 bucks, people are looking for something that's not too expensive to spend on a grinder. And until now, that has not really been available in the flat burr profile. But with the DF54, now that's the case. Let's just do a short disclaimer. This unit right here only cost $229. I did get this sent to me from Luke over there at Me Coffee. It's not available just yet. You're gonna have to wait until the end of March. But I do believe once this hits the market, this is gonna be a really good seller. First of all, for all the features it offers, for the build quality, for the fact that it's a single doser. And I mean, it's already made a name for itself. The DF6483 and now the 54, they're really getting to be well known. Let's just talk about it. Let's see what it comes with, the build quality, the features that it offers, and of course, ultimately, how good is it for espresso? How good is it for pour over? So if we just have a look at this little guy right here, it feels pretty nice because it's painted metal. I do believe that the body is made out of aluminum. The base is also made out of metal. I believe that's painted aluminum. It's got a fork here coming out to hold your portafilter, or in this case, it's slanted, which is nice because you can just slide the cup in there and the ground shoot right in there. Moving up from there, what's super duper nice is that this grinder comes equipped with an, a deionizer so that when the grounds are coming out, they are a bit static laden. But with the deionizer, what it does is able to remove some of that static, which is great. It comes in here nice and fluffy. It makes less of a mess on your workspace. Awesome. So that is excellent. Moving up from there, what we've got on top is a very nice looking dial. This is the same one as what I have seen on the DF83 model. It's got this nice glass, the glass top above the numbers, which are white etched into the black background. Very nice to, to touch and to handle. And uh, the outer collar is aluminum, machined aluminum, as is here, the upper burr holder. Then we've got a bellows a black rubber bellows and a wooden bellows cover. Now this is the, I'm gonna, where I'm gonna start to say, okay, something negative is the fact that this slides off super easy. I've knocked it off numerous times myself. So you do have to kind of be careful when you're taking the lid off or when you are putting beans in because I've, I've knocked it off often enough. However, that is really the only thing that I've noticed so far besides one other thing, it grinds slow. It doesn't have a slow motor. It's running at 1400 RPMs, but it takes me almost half a minute to get 16 grams through there, just like the fellow Opus. I think that might have something to do with this deionizer that's installed. But whatever the case, very solid build. It's heavy, it weighs uh, 10 pounds or nearly five kilos. Yeah, it's substantial. So what else is there to say about it before we start using it? It uh, uses 54 millimeter burrs and I've taken them out. They actually look very similar to the burrs I've got in my Eureka Specialita. They're not actually 55, they are 54 millimeters as well. So this is really comparable to the Specialita, but of course at a different price point. And of course here you got a single doser. The Specialita has got a hopper on it. So. This is really kind of a different story. This is for those people who want to measure out their beans first, put them in here, and then uh, grind their beans and be able to really remove anything from the chamber. And that's one nice thing about this. The chamber gets super nice and clean after you bellows through there. There's very little retention here. You do have to ask yourself the question, is that for me? Do I want to measure out my beans every single time that I make a shot and put it through there, wait 30 seconds and bellows it out? 
or do I just want something easier, a hoppered option like the Specialita, like the Barazza ESP? That's up to you. But I would say, let's go ahead and just make a shot. And after that, I'm going to unscrew this. We're gonna take a look at it and see what the insides look like. Look at the burrs, look at the burr carrier, look at the wave washer inside, and just see how much retention is left in there. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm using today are some beans from a local roaster. Very important. If you want good, fresh, freshly roasted beans, try to go to a local roaster. This one is from Martin Müller. This is the Autostrada blend. It's 70% Robusta, which is a lot of Robusta. Normally you just have 20 or 30% Robusta. And what that does is it gives you a lot of crema and more caffeine. That doesn't necessarily mean the taste is gonna be better, however. I find that if there's a lot of Robusta, you're gonna end up with kind of a woody, kind of an earthy taste. But that's what we're using today because I thought I just wanna try these guys out. Let's go ahead and measure out 16 grams. And so here you see what the workflow is like. If you're not used to single dosing, it takes a little bit of time to measure out your dose. And oh, oh I got 16.3. So now I'm gonna put a 16.0, great. And I'm at a setting of 16 and a half. We're gonna do a cold start. Okay, and that wasn't too bad, about 20 or 22 seconds, right around there. This is how loud it is when it's not under a load. All right, so what you got are some really, really nice fluffy grounds. You can see that there's not really any kind of static on there. And that is great, really nice for workflow. It also has a 58 millimeter diameter, so this will fit inside a 58 millimeter porta filter really well. I, however, have got a DeLonghi here that's 51 millimeters, and I do think a lot of people are gonna be pairing their DeLonghi's probably with something like this DF54. So therefore I'm using a 51 millimeter machine. All right. And let's let her rip. Looking pretty darn good so far. Excuse my doggy in the background, if you can hear her. All right, 25 seconds. And, oh my gosh, that is a ton of crema, son of a gun. So we have got here a nice looking espresso. Got our two to one ratio, or just slightly over in just about 30 seconds or so. Let's see how it tastes. It's got a pretty nice balance to it. Um, to be honest, and that's what I find actually is the advantage for me with this DF54 or even with the Opus. I found the shots were really balanced, not not really astringent necessarily or um, or bitter. This, however, with so much Robusta in it, it does have a bit of that woody taste. There's less of the chocolate for me, um, a little bit less of the sweetness, but some people do prefer such a nice uh, robust shot. And I have tested this with various beans. I've tested it with a light roast. I've tested it with a medium roast and it does a really good job with that. I've tested also with pour over and now I will say about pour over, it does a pretty, pretty good job on that, but I would say its focus is certainly more on espresso because I compared setting this at 65 and setting the DF83 at 65 and doing a pour over in the DF83 was able to bring out a fair amount more juiciness um, in the coffee, a fair amount more of that acidity that you're looking for. The flavors were a little bit more muddled um, with the DF54, and I don't know if that's just a question of perception on my part, or if it has to do with larger burrs, or maybe a slightly different burr geometry, but I do feel like this really excels for me for espresso. Now what I want to do is just take this apart real quick and show you guys the inside. And then we're going to compare this to a couple other options you have in that price range. I'm going to unplug it. Take that bellows right off like that. 
And all you have to do is unscrew it. So this is nice, it's toolless. You don't need anything except for a hand to unturn it. And you're gonna soon have the upper burr chamber in your hands. There you go. So this upper burr chamber is made out of machined aluminum. It's got a anti-popcorning disc in there. And it's got 54 millimeter burrs. It is quite interesting that these are 54 millimeters as well as the Specialita. They're both the same size, although the Specialita is advertised as 55. I did measure it at 54 millimeters, just the same as this one. And on this one, I do feel like um, what you've got going on here on the geometry is uh, you've got angles that are a little bit aggressive, I think, for doing the espresso. And you've got decent size hollows in there for the pre-breaking. If we look like that, I'm guessing the geometry Hopefully you can see the geometry looks actually very similar. I don't know if this is a um, an espresso specific or a brew specific burr or I don't think it's all purpose. To me, it looks probably like it's gonna be somewhere along the lines of an espresso burr. Now, if you have a look here in the burr chamber, there's really not much left in there. So let's just do one more for retention test because I forgot to do it. Let's put this back together. And that is the nice thing. Look at how easily I got that back together already. I should also mention it's a 150 watt motor in there. Okay, we'll put that back to 16 and a half. We're gonna dose this up and I'm gonna measure the retention this time. I had 16.0 grams. Let's see what we get out. So before banging on the bells, you got 15.8. And after 15.9. And that seems to be pretty much what I'm getting is right around 0 0.1 grams of retention, sometimes 0.0, because you will end up getting some out from like the previous extractions, but it does a nice job with the retention or lack thereof. What do I think? What are my final thoughts about this grinder? I think for the price, you really can't go wrong. It's got a really, really solid build quality. Um, it's it's relatively handy. I do like the fact that it's a little bit smaller dimension than the, the DF64 or the 83. You can pick it up and move it around. That's nice. The deionizer is sweet. Um, I do like the dial very much on really all of these grinders. The indicator here in the front is nice. It also stays in place as long as you put the top burr carrier in. You know, it's slotted, it's keyed, so you're gonna be able to get that in the right spot each time. There's a lot to like about this machine. On the other hand, it does grind slowly, and this pops off sometimes, but in general, it's a sweet grinder. And if you compare it to the other cheaper grinders in that price range, certainly the build quality of this one is gonna be better. And the grind quality is very nice. You're getting 54 millimeter flappers for the price that you're normally paying for 38 or 40 millimeter conical burrs. Let's just have a look optically. How does this look compared to, for example, the Specialita? So here we got the Specialita. The Specialita, of course, it is different. This is a 310 watt motor, I believe. This is a 150 watt motor. This has got a nice display on it, which is really cool. So you can set up different times here. And it's got Italian design and build, made in Italy. So that's awesome. It's got a lot of heritage. Eureka has been around since 1920 as a company. Just to see the display. And let's compare this also to the Smart Grinder Pro. So while the Smart Grinder Pro is also, it's got a metal casing. It's it's really, it's light. I mean, that son of a gun is really light. This is way heavier. This is also heavy. I would say these two are probably right around the same. I think they're both right around five kilos. And yeah, the Sage is way, way lighter. Yeah, and the Sage has got the conical burst inside. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right there. Now, it's up to you guys. What do you think? about this as an option for a starter grinder do you think that it's a good value what do you think about the quality based on what you've seen so far and are you going to go for it 
when it comes to market in March. I hope you guys like this video. And until next time, I say Arrivederci, Fiat Seich, and bye now.